I need to talk about Fallout 76. It's not going to be a good talk, and it's one I've not wanted to have, but it's one that I feel needs to happen. I have been very vocal in my support of 76, and what it means for the Fallout franchise. Before the game released, I produced two separate videos detailing why I thought Fallout 76 would be good. And, despite what I'm about to say, I still stand by the overall sentiment of those videos. Fallout 76 is a broken game. This is by no means some amazing newsflash, nor something controversial to say at this point. In fact, those of us who actually enjoy the game seem to be the ones holding the controversial viewpoint. So, what's going on here, you might be wondering? Is Sarge jumping on the bandwagon of hatred? No. No, I'm not. What I'm doing is preparing to tell you a story. This morning, I jumped into Fallout 76 with a purpose in mind. I was heading to the abandoned munitions factory. I was going to take it over and hold it for the whole day. I'd make a guide talking about this place and why it's so beneficial, and also make myself plenty of ammo so I can actually test out a few character build ideas. Clearing out the place is a simple but fairly rewarding procedure. A handful of super mutants are set up there, but my sniper rifle makes quick work of them. I claim the public workshop and set about placing turrets, repairing structures and powering resource gatherers. Most importantly, I set the ammo factory to start making 10mm ammo. With that all sorted, I set out for a bit of exploration. I want to get an idea of what the land around the munitions factory is like. It's one of the many areas in 76 that I haven't fully explored yet, and there's always more that I can be searching for. As I continue to wander, I come across a trio of Scorch Beasts, all having spawned in at once to attempt to overwhelm me. Fortunately, my trusty power armor makes their attacks do little, and I can easily weather the fight. Unfortunately, I only have a couple of guns with me, and limited ammo supplies. I call in a Vertibot to assist me, but it doesn't stand a chance against the trio of winged demons. In the end, I decide to leave the fight, taking a looping path to ensure the Scorch Beasts don't venture too close to my precious ammo factory. With my brief venture finished, I return to the ammo factory just in time for a defend event to begin. I climb atop the roof and patiently wait for enemies to attack, my sniper rifle ready to prove its worth. I fight off waves of wolves, many of whom are level 50 glowing ones. The fight rages on, and a trio of power armor clad players arrive. They begin to kill the wolves, helping me in my fight. I'm grateful for their assistance, but worried that they may try to take the factory for themselves. After slaying the final wolf, I go to give them a friendly salute, letting them know that I'm not hostile, and attempt to open up channels of negotiation. At this moment, I feel the true value of this game. I have no idea how the situation will play out. These aren't NPCs with set behaviours, but other players who could do anything. Maybe they'll just leave, deciding the ammo plan isn't worth a fight. Perhaps they will want to team up, add a fourth member to their squad in order to undertake a particularly dangerous mission. Or they could even start a fight, try to use their numbers against me and take the factory for themselves. These and a dozen other possibilities could take place. I truly don't know what's about to happen. As these thoughts rush through my head, the game freezes, and then crashes to desktop. That amazing moment turns to dust in an instant. I load back into the game, in the vain hope that it will spawn me in the same server, and I'll be able to reap the rewards of my work. But when I turn up, it's of course a different server. The area has changed, and everything has gone. I put time, caps, and resources into building up that factory, and I lost them all. I'm writing this all up just after the event has happened, and a small part of me is glad that it did occur. Most of me is pretty damn annoyed, for justifiable reasons, but there is some good that comes out of this. It presents me with a perfect example as to the great strengths and terrible problems that the game has. I said at the start of the video that I stand by the sentiment of my pre-release videos, 
and I truly do mean that. Fallout 76 has the potential to be a great game that offers a unique Fallout experience. Problem is, it's not there yet. There's a plethora of problems with the game, both big and small. The minor glitches such as T-posing enemies or elongated necks aren't a big deal. We can all live with them and they even provide entertainment. The big glitches though, the crashes, the social menu not working properly, quests not correctly updating, those are the ones that are giving those who hate the game so much ammunition to work with. The current user scores on Metacritic are unfair. The game already had gathered a large and determined group of anti-76ers who wanted the game to fail and refused to give it a chance. Plenty of these people submitted a zero score on Metacritic as soon as they could in order to drag it down. What is much more fair are the critic review scores. These ranged in the low to mid 50s, and this truly is where 76 is at right now. There are times when the game can be great. A multiplayer Fallout experience is one that plenty of people have wanted for ages, and being able to explore the post-apocalypse with your friends is one of the best gaming experiences out there. The problem is, the game still needs a lot of work. Bugs and glitches are common in any large game, and really shouldn't be something anyone is surprised by these days. That said, they still shouldn't be industry standard. Buying a game at release means paying full price to deal with a host of issues that normally get resolved within the first few months. For anyone who has been complaining about the glitch fest that 76 can be, I encourage you to make the same complaints with any new game it releases without all the necessary polish. Better yet, don't buy games on release unless you're certain about them. Wait a few months and the game will likely have dropped a little in price and will be a better product than it was at launch. I know a lot of us want to get into the game as soon as possible, I'm incredibly guilty of this, as is any YouTuber out there. We all want to get in day one, make content quickly, and just rush through it all. This isn't good for the average consumer though. You get a worse product than you would later on, and it generally costs you more. It's just bad, and this doesn't feel right. After recording this, I ended up watching a video by Get Good Guy called Battlefield 5 Needs These Changes. It's a startlingly similar video, but instead talking about Battlefield 5. I checked the Metacritic scores, and the user scores are only fractionally higher than Fallout 76. Likewise, BF5 gained a large negative following before the game was ever out, and there's a host of reasons people are either refusing to buy the game, or not enjoying their time playing. I wanted to add this quick section, as I want everyone watching to know that what's happening with 76 isn't unique. I recommend taking a look at Get Good Guy's video after watching this, and taking note of the comparisons. There's a lot of issues with gaming in general these days, and I have a feeling it's something we're going to be dealing with for a very long time. To round things off, I want to say this. I am NOT abandoning Fallout 76. I've had some of my best gaming moments with this game, and I'm going to stick with it, for better or for worse. The game has a lot of positives that I want to share on my channel, and I want to be a positive voice in the community. There's already been one large patch and a maintenance shutdown for the game, which shows that Bethesda are trying to improve things. The level of success with these is debatable, but the intent at least is there. I sincerely hope that by early 2019, this will be a game that fans can be truly proud of. A great game that we all look forward to playing. For now though, there's a lot to work on. There's far too much negativity surrounding the game right now, and I'm determined to be a positive voice in the crowd. The world can be downbeat enough at times, and the last thing any of us need are more people on the internet making things seem worse than they are. I plan on making plenty more Fallout 76 content, however I doubt too much of it will be like this. If you do enjoy the game and want to see more, then I'd recommend you do subscribe. You've made it this far in the video, so it seems my voice isn't too grating for you to deal with. If you despise Fallout 76 and were just looking for another video bashing the game, then first I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching through to this point and listening to what I have to say. Our opinions don't line up, but you listen to me anyway. 
I wouldn't recommend you subscribe, but I still appreciate you tuning in this one time. This outro is dragging on far too long, so I'll wrap it up quickly now. Standard content resumes soon, I'll be having a more upbeat guide out tomorrow to balance things out, and I'm hoping to start a challenge run of sorts next week, and hopefully we'll have a character build up in about a week's time too. Like the video if you enjoyed, share with your friends, yada yada, you know the drill. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.